Hi y'all, welcome back to the garden. Traveling through the front flower bed right now, I'm gonna show you some things. I got back from GardenCom on Friday and I immediately took a look around the garden because we had record heat. Every time I'm away from the garden, for some reason we have record something. When I was in Minnesota at Bailey, we had record rainfall and uh, we had record heat this past week for August in Ohio, Southwest Ohio anyway. A lot of our state is in a drought. We are lucky enough to be like in a very low state of drought, but the drip irrigation and the Crescent Garden containers that I have kept everything alive really well. There were some curling on some things, even though they were getting water, including this dogwood that I have somewhere right here. Maybe it's this one right here um, on the leaves because it was just so extremely hot and we had dipped down and gotten a little cool there for a bit. Uh, I also brought back some plants with me, so I'm going to show those to you. And I'm going to start probably in the morning. I'm going to get out here early because it's still kind of warm. Today was like our hopefully last big hot day. And then we're hopefully we'll start trending downward as we enter September for more planting. But uh, I'm going to show you some things right quick, including some annuals that I'm going to be pulling and what I'm going to be replacing them with as perennials. So amazingly, while I was gone, a lot of the hydrangeas, this is Let's Dance Can Do, started pushing lots of buds, which is nice. So I need to get uh, some more fertilizer on these so we can get as many buds as possible and blooms on them before fall. Uh, and then we have, I came through and pulled a bunch of crabgrass on this side of the garden um, last night when it was cooler. I still need to make it around the rest of the garden because for some reason, when we have those really hot temperatures, the crabgrass just explodes in this bed. You can see my Cleome, uh, even though I fertilized them, they have about had it. Some people recommend cutting them back, but we only have less than two months left in our season, so I'm going to pull these out tomorrow. And so there's going to be a big gap here, but I'm going to start filling them with small shrubs. There's going to be uh, a lot of space here that I've got to think about and what I want to add here, but i got a lot of shrubs coming in that I can put down here. They're gonna need to be some part sun to sun shrubs or something I'll have to move in the future because I do have this variegated dogwood here that looks a little rough after the heat we had this past week. But it'll be nice to get this empty and be able to see what is um, can fit in this location nicely. As we head over here, I did show you the El Nino Desert Orchid or Catalpa at Proven Winters Trial Gardens and Based on how tall that one was, it is not situated great. So I'm going to be digging that up. I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to do it a little further closer to fall so it'll transplant better. But I don't want something that big or something getting that big right there. Additionally, these golden butterfly marguerite daisies have bit the dust. This is the only one that's got just a little life left in it. But I picked up some bit o' honey heliopsis because I really love this yellow color here. It's a nice bright pop around all of these other evergreens and darker shrubs. So I have seven of them to replace exactly the number of, of uh, golden butterflies daisies I have here. And then I have three yarrow, which are a yellow yarrow to replace these three right here. So I'm gonna pull those up in the morning before it gets too warm and go ahead and replant with those Heliopsis. I really love how colorful these are and I have a Heliopsis in the back from Proven Winners that I was trialing this year, and it has bloomed nonstop since I received it. So it'll be as potent, I hope, as an annual in this space, and I'm excited to get them in and get these things yanked out because for the past few weeks, past month, they've just been on a slow decline. The Super Tunia Vista bubblegum is looking incredible on this side. I'm probably not gonna plant it here next year because it's just so big. But I also wanted to show you the amount of growth these put on, these roses. These are Rise Up Ember Rays by Proven Winners and uh, a lot of growth this past week. It's amazing when you spend a week away from the garden how much growth some things can put on when it's really hot and they're getting enough water. You remember I did fertilize these with some Heirloom Roses fish fertilizer before I, um, or right after I trimmed them up along this trellis and they responded really well clearly. When a lot of my other annuals are looking a little weary like this uh, snow princess I think Alyssum down here this is looking 
incredible. This is Campfire Marshmallow Biodens. It has been covered with pollinators and it is so thick. So this is definitely going to be on my list and I'm going to be getting both varieties if they're available locally next year because it's just been an incredible performer for me. There's a total of 10 plants here just to give you an idea. Uh, they looked so bad when I planted them because they were the last thing I planted and I had taken a couple weeks to do it and they were getting too much water that I was afraid they were going to die. So I planted them really closely. I've never grown it before. I never expected it to get this big, but I'm really loving it. And the Gomfrina, this is Truffula Pink on the other side of the, the bench here is looking incredible too. It's been a pollinator magnet as well. There are all sorts of little butterflies and bees over it all day. In fact, when you walk down the sidewalk, there are so many insects flying around, pollinators specifically, uh, that it might scare some people off, but I love seeing it. Now let's talk about some of the things that I got uh, while I was at GardenCom, because if you go to GardenCom, it's for garden communicators. Uh, they, the sponsors usually bring some plants, and I drove up there because it was hosted in Michigan this year, and I brought back some plants that were available uh, for people to take. And so I'm going to show you some of those now. So we come along this way. A lot of my perennials are looking tired too, so I probably need to cut them back. But I'm not worrying about it too much this year. I really wanted to keep as much foliage on a lot of these as possible so they could bulk up for next year. So keep encouraging that photosynthesis and growth and feeding the roots. And then next year, I'll probably do the standard chop back that a lot of perennials need to keep looking their best throughout the year, but not this year. I did plant this Mucho Gusto Abelia, which is in the Proven Winners collection, and it is really stunning. It's supposed to get three to five foot tall and wide, so if it gets that big, I may relocate it. But for now, I think it's a nice color combination among these perennials and this kindred spirit oak I have here. Also went ahead and planted the lemon squeeze grass that I picked up locally from Natorps uh, a couple weeks ago so it can fill out the space and be really nice. Something else I'm keeping an eye on as you know is this Winecraft black smoke bush here. When this was originally added to the Proven Winners collection it was supposed to stay smaller but since that time they've changed the sizing and when I planted it I didn't know they had changed the sizing and one of you had graciously let me know. So we're going to keep it there this year and probably next year, see how much it grows. They grew really slowly at my last house, but this one's put on a good foot and a half of growth this season. So it might be one I need to look at moving and relocating to. For anyone wondering what this grass is, this is lemongrass. I've got it planted in a couple spaces in the garden. It's gotten really big. Uh, and I'm going to look at removing that too here soon to fill in those blank spots as we head towards fall with something that will last from year to year rather than being an annual. This week as well in the evenings I'm going to come through and um, plant some of the trees that I have back there that I showed you a couple videos ago including my Bracken's Brown Beauty Magnolia and some of the other things now that it looks like we're going to be in the 70s for the next week or so in the, as the highs. And that's a good opportunity to go ahead and get things in the ground, let them start acclimating a little bit so you can keep them well watered um, as we enter fall. So this bed still needs work and I'm probably going to add some perennials in this area or some ground covers. This is south facing so it gets a lot of sun. Uh, we have a quick fire fab hydrangea here in the center that has interesting florets. I need to cut back some of that dead wood. Uh, and then we have a first edition shrub here called Little Spark. It is a spirea that stays really small. It has nice sar chartreuse foliage, already in zones three through eight, and only gets about two foot tall and wide. So I placed it here so it can kind of crawl a little bit over this um, rock and kind of soften the edge of that a little bit. And then I have another Caryopteris. Uh, this one's called Sapphire Surf and it's in the first edition shrub collection as well. It gets two to three foot tall and wide and has even darker blue blooms than the one I showed you from Proven Winners. And ever since I put this one out, I got two of them, it has been collecting pollinators nonstop. There's one in the back I'll show you as well as I go around there. But it's almost more attractant than a butterfly bush is that I've seen. There's just so many things on it all day. We're headed towards the end of the day when the pollinators go take uh, their bedtime. But right now it's still covered up in pollinators. 
I pulled a little bit of weeds uh, right here in this space. So you know I still got to get drip irrigation, this foul box in the ground. Uh, I need to get some water on this before I go inside. But this is a white pillar, uh, Rose of Sharon. And it grows pretty tall, but not super, super wide. And I'm going to let it climb up here or grow very upright along this uh, pool pump area to soften this wood and downspout. This is another Rose of Sharon right here, and I'm, I don't love a huge amount of Rose of Sharons, and I don't love red blooms, but I spotted this one at First Edition Shrubs booth when I was at GardenCom, and it's called French Cabaret Red Hibiscus uh, or Rose of Sharon, and it gets five to eight foot tall and four to seven foot wide, but it's not actually a red bloom. It's kind of mauve, and so I can deal with those color flowers. And look how stunning of a color that is. And I'm not seeing it on another hibiscus before. You can see how dark the new buds are there. They're very dark, almost look purple. But all the new blooms, and these look a little rough because they were getting overhead water uh, for the last couple days, but this is what you're gonna look for right here is this color. So a very beautiful muted red, more of a mauve color that I can handle in the garden anyway. I popped another Little Spark Spirea right here from the First Editions collection. So it'll be paired nicely with this um, elderberry. This is laced up from Proven Winners here. It'll grow very upright. I showed you that in the Proven Winners Trial Gardens recently at the last video. Still got all these areas open to plant in, which is really exciting to fill out this fall with some things. And then I added another one of those Caryopteris. This is Sapphire Surf right here. Stunning contrast against this fluffy Arborvita from the Proven Winners Collection. If you can find this locally, but you can also order it online, I would highly recommend you pick one up. It's a really stunning color. The foliage is almost uh, like the silver color that's really nice. And then the blue blooms with contrasting with anything is unlike anything you'll see in the garden typically, so it's really nice. You can still see it's covered up with bees and fly butterflies. They're really loving that. Now tonight, before I started shooting my video, I got my swing, uh, porch swing up from Hollywood that I bought. Uh, it came in right before I left for uh, Garden Calm, and I got the extra chains today to hang it. So I've been getting some uh, Hollywood furniture because I don't like the uh, effort that comes with restaining actual wood and actually Hollywood has a nice collection of uh, wood or it's plastic wood but it lasts it has a 20-year residential warranty and it's textured you can get textured on some items some items are not textured but the ones that are textured look very wood like and they're easy to clean up and you can buy uh, bench seating for them or bench cushions, which is really nice. So I have one around the uh, pool area, a nice polywood bench. I'm going to be getting a few more and investing in their furniture over the next several years because I just really like it. It looks good. Um, they have some really nice styles available and I'm not sponsored by them, but I do really like their products. So now I gotta get wood chips over here uh, on top of this grass. The por porch swing is a little high, but by the time I add wood chips to it underneath a good five to six inches of wood chips, it'll be perfectly placed and I can still adjust it a little bit if I need to. But my order from Bailey would probably come in the next couple weeks in mid-September. So I need to get some wood chips down to start killing off this grass so I can start planting and stuff, uh, planting in here once it arrives. This is the Heliopsis that I told you that I've blooming since I got it in the spring. This is Touch of Blush. Pretty windy this evening, but the Crescent Garden containers performed flawlessly while I was gone when it was nearly 100 degrees. They look really great. They're a little wind blown right now because it's so windy this evening, but uh, the Supertunia Vista, bu Vista bubble gum is slowly getting taken over by the sweet potato vine. So next year, that might be something that I still plant in here just because it looked pretty until the super t or till the potato vine took over or I'll put less potato vine in here so maybe it's not so vigorous I think I put four one in each corner so maybe I'll put more super tunia vista bubble gum and less potato vine so I want a little more of that to show through 
gonna tweak some of the containers next year uh, but, but this one overall was a really big success for me the smaller crescent garden true drop pinch container um, completely the pot potato vine in it completely overwhelmed everything and i had to cut it completely back a couple weeks ago uh, i didn't shoot that on camera but i cut these potato vine back to basically almost the ground left a little bit of stem and then in just a couple weeks this is what it looks like again as you remember there was super tunia bordeaux in here uh, it is nowhere to be found anymore so for the rest of the season this will just be potato vine which i'm fine with still looks really nice but next year i won't be planting potato vine in these because they were too vigorous i mean how quickly these have rebounded they're already halfway down the container and I may have to cut them back again before fall. But I may start removing some things and doing some fall decorating here soon. Uh, the containers, I don't typically do a whole lot of change over in fall. We can go very quickly into fall. And so it's not something that I've done a whole lot of previously. I think it's so windy because it's blowing in that cooler weather for us, thank goodness. But before we go, I want to show you the flowerful hydrangeas that I planted. About a month ago, five weeks or so ago, from um, that I picked up at Cultivate from the first edition shrub collection, they have put on so many buds in the week I was gone. So I need to come through and clip off the old blooms. These burned because they had not received enough water at Cultivate, and then they were put out here in the sun. They were on drip irrigation, but typically uh, my arborescence with enough drip irrigation have not burned in the past. But look at all of these buds, which is kind of uncommon for an arborescence this time of year based on the ones I've grown before. Uh, so I'm really excited about this variety and how much growth it's putting on just right now. This one has not got quite as many buds, but some of these others do. Look, one, two, three. This one's going to form one, four, five. Uh, lots more growth down here. This one also starting to put new buds on and new growth. And this one too. So every one of them almost is putting on new growth. So I think that's going to be a really exceptional variety. I'll continue trialing these next year. Got some more in tiny containers that I'm going to be popping in the landscape up front and around the back shrub border just to fill in, which will be really nice over time. I don't want to seem like I'm in such a rush to enter fall, but I want to get stuff settled. Uh, next year, I want to be able to finesse areas more. Uh, this year, there was a lot of just planting and putting things in the ground. So uh, the maintenance of my beds is not something that as, was as much of a priority this year like it typically was at my prior garden. Um, so we're going to do take that a little slower next year. I say I will. Seems like I'm always getting huge projects underway when spring hits as I've been dreaming all winter. But it is something I want to focus on uh, doing a little more wonderfully next year. As we back up and look at the entire garden, some of the things next year are going to be expanding probably some of these bed areas or at least planting more trees around here you know i've planted a ton of trees in the past year on this property lots of new things but there's still areas i can fill in with some gorgeous varieties and specimens and so that's something i'm going to be looking forward to as well all right i'm going to call it an evening y'all thank you for joining me and remember be a light take care bye